DJI 2 Pro, Pro Platinum, Mavic Air, Mavic Mini. Four of DJI's most popular drones and all of them varying massively in functionality and price. Not a day goes by when I'm not asked which is the best model that I should get. There is no straightforward answer to that. All of them have got their pros and cons and that is what I'm talking about today. Hello, I'm Ian and I probably get to play with more drones than most people do. But today I'm talking about DJI's four main consumer folding drones and trying to work out which one would be best for you as each of them have got good and bad points that may be less or more important to you. So what I'm going to try and do today is uh, score the main considerations that you'd be going through in your mind when you were checking out and deciding which model to go for. So those main considerations I think would basically include obviously the, the obvious one, how much it costs, how good the uh, picture and video is that it takes, how well it's constructed, its size, its weight, how long it flies for, and lastly how well it flies with regards to anti-collision uh, sensors, speed, wind handling, uh, signal quality and range. Regular viewers on my channel are going to know that I love all four of these drones uh, with very good reason because all of them are incredible bits of kit. So I'm also going to go through why I think not all specifications and functionality is equally important and why despite one particular model may be scoring less than others, it may well be the perfect model for you. Ain't over till the fat lady sings, there's a lot to get through, so let's get straight to it. First off, I'm going to go straight through with price. It's clear cut and easy, so I won't spend too much time on this. All the models have got combo versions with extra batteries and accessories and I do normally recommend you go for the combo model but for the purposes of comparison today I'm just going through the basic model. First up we'll start off with the Mavic Mini because he is by far and away the cheapest. He is $400 or £370 and is uh, easily the cheapest drone today. <clears throat> Next up you're going to have the Mavic Air. Mavic Air goes for around $900 or uh, about £800. Next up you're going to have the Pro Platinum which uh, goes a little bit more, $1,150 or around £1,000. Finally you have the big beast, the Mavic 2 Pro which comes in at a whopping uh, $1,500 or around £1,350. Keep in mind the Mavic 2 Pro has got a sibling in the form of the Mavic Zoom. The Mavic Zoom is slightly cheaper, um, almost all the specs are the same with the exception of the camera. So I'm going to lump them together uh, with the, uh, Mavic 2 Pro, under the Mavic 2 Pro banner and I'll cover what those differences are later on in the video. Next up is camera, which is pretty crucial for most users. Uh, in this case, the Mavic 2 Pro wins hands down. Its huge one inch CMOS sensor shoots beautiful 20 megapixel photos and 4K video. Uh, it's got two fields of view, giving you a bit of lossless zoom. It's got a variable aperture and almost every aspect of the, uh, of the Mavic 2 Pro can be manually controlled. It's got uh, 1080 shooting at 120 frames per second and a bit rate of up to 100 megabits per second. Next we come the Pro Platinum, the Air and the Mini, uh, all of which have got a smaller half inch uh, 12 megapixel sensor, but their specs do differ. Both the Air and the Pro shoot video in 4K. The Air manages to shoot slow-mo at 1080p, 120 frames per second as well, just like the Mavic 2 Pro. It's also got a video bitrate of up to 100 uh, megabits per second. Whilst the Pro Platinum can only manage uh, 96 frames per second at 1080 and has got a bitrate of only up to 60 megabits per second. And finally, sadly, the Mini comes in which only manages 2.7K video and only 60 frames per second at uh, 1080p for slow-mo. It's got a lower video bitrate as well of just 40 megabits per second. Also, what's a real shame, I think, for the uh, Mini is that it doesn't produce photos in RAW. It only uh, shoots in JPEG. But look, whilst these specs put the Mavic Mini firmly at the bottom of the camera contest, if you like, you do have to keep in mind just how high the specifications are for all four models. All of them will shoot video at a resolution far higher than Blu-ray discs. Specs are not really everything, and you can see that all four models are capable of producing absolutely stunning video. So another point to remember of course is that whilst the 2 Pro and the Mavic Air have got uh, 8 gigs of internal memory for storage of photos and video, the uh, Mavic Pro Platinum and the Mini doesn't have any internal storage at all. 
it's another point to consider. Anyway, look, next up, uh, build quality, size, and weight. So for size, it's pretty clear, Mavic Mini is going to win hands down. It is truly a pocket drone, especially if you've got baggy trousers on. They do say the best camera is the one that's with you at the time. Mini is certainly small enough and light enough to travel anywhere with you. 249 grams, it also ducks under the requirements to register in many countries and will slip into your backpack easily. Next up, you're going to have the Mavic Air. It's slightly larger and heavier at 430 grams, but uh, around, that's about, probably about a pound in weight, but it's still small and light enough to carry around in your backpack with you uh, with no problem when you're out hiking. Next up is the Pro Platinum. It's larger again, three times the weight of the Mavic Mini at uh, 734 grams, or about one and a half pounds in weight. Finally, have the uh, big monster, the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, it's a chunky two pounds or uh, 907 grams, uh, which is a fair old weight when you're trying to go hiking. Also keep in mind in the UK, that's seven grams too heavy for some of the new distance rules coming into force later in the UK in, uh, later on in, in this year, in 2020. So whilst the 2 Pro comes bottom in terms of size and weight, it easily comes top in terms of uh, build quality. Its arms fold out solid with a solid and smooth movement. Everything about it feels strong and well engineered. Its huge gimbal protects uh, this enormous uh, one inch CMOS sensor and the lower pitch of the propellers does make it uh, seem a little bit quieter and certainly less annoying. Next up, the Pro Platinum. Uh, again, solidly built, but let down by its very exposed gimbal that breaks if you just look at it the wrong way. And because of that, I would actually put the Mavic Air in second place, because despite being it lighter and a bit more plasticky, its gimbal is far better protected in the event of a crash. So sadly, yet again, that leaves the Mavic Mini in last place for build quality, which isn't surprising given the engineering requirement to get it under 250 grams. So for that, you do get a very lightweight little drone, lightweight, very thin little props, and arms that sadly do not feel very strong, but everything seems to do the job absolutely fine. So next up, look, I'd say uh, flight time. Uh, again, the specs speak for themselves here. Mavic 2 Pro giving you a 31 minute flight time, uh, closely followed by the Pro and the Mini's 30 minutes. The Air is left trailing with just 21 minutes, which I have to admit, I have found pretty frustrating at times. You do need to keep in mind though that all of these times are for gentle flying with no wind and don't take into account uh, the low and critical battery functions. So look, in practice, you are gonna get around 25 minutes for the two Pro, the Pro and the Mini, and around 17 minutes for the Air. Flight safety and sensors next, and uh, again, Mavic 2 Pro wins hands down here. It's got forward, rear, up, down and sidewards uh, sensors. And whilst these are still gonna probably miss twigs and wires, the 2 Pro's omnidirectional uh, sensing system is easily the most comprehensive of the four. Next up, you've got the Mavic Air. Uh, it sports forwards, rear and downward sensors, whilst the Pro Platinum only has forward and downward sensors. Last again, sadly, we have the Mavic Mini with only downward sensors, which are more just for landing protection as opposed to collision avoidance as such. Look, for me, collision avoidance sensors are not actually a major issue. When I'm flying, I try and be well above people and obstacles by hefty margins. Speed is also an interesting one. The Mavic 2 Pro can uh, get up to 45 miles per hour and 72 kilometers per hour in sports mode, and that seems insanely fast, but it is very useful when you're traveling longer distance. Next up, the Mavic Air is at 42 miles per hour, and then the Mavic Pro uh, just below that at 40 miles an hour. Um, little Mavic Mini again, significantly slower here with a max speed of just 29 miles per hour. Maximum speeds are not just about how fast it can fly. It also has a massive effect on how each drone handles wind. The 2 Pro and the Air can fly extremely fast when flying into strong wind. Indeed, this flight in Iceland saw me flying the 2 Pro in easily the strongest winds I have ever flown in. The Pro Platinum though limits the pitch it will actually uh, fly into the wind in order to avoid the anti-collision sensors from becoming useless. And for that reason, it doesn't actually handle strong wind very well at all, unless you know to turn off the um, collision avoidance sensors. And then way, way down by a long way, unfortunately comes the Mavic Mini again, which is something you really need to watch out for. Top speed of 27 miles an hour is fast enough for most people, but the wind gets up, especially at higher altitudes, the Mini can struggle to return to home if it's having to fly into wind. This is due to the limited pitch angle, uh, along with the limited power of the motors, and it's something I've done a few videos on, so you do need to watch out for the wind with a Mavic Mini.
So, so the last parameter is signal range. Uh, two clear winners here, the 2 Pro and the Pro Platinum, both use uh, a system of transmission called OcuSync, which is easily capable of giving flight ranges of two to three miles. For both these models, the signals are absolutely rock solid. For both these models, their signals are absolutely rock solid and suffer from very little interference. Conversely, the Air and the Mini use something called enhanced Wi-Fi, which still manages flights of up to two to three kilometers or about one and a half miles. Uh, but generally those sorts of big ranges are only achieved in the USA where you have something called FAA mode, which um, allows a higher transmission power from the remote control to the drone itself. Elsewhere in the world, CE mode kicks in, that reduces the transmission power slightly, and you're more prone to suffer interference, uh, especially if you're near a town or city. But to be clear, in rural settings, away from interference, you'll still easily get a good one to two kilometers, or at least a mile, with both models. A final few words on some other functions of the various models. All four of these models have got some form of intelligent or autonomous flight modes. The 2 Pro and the Air lead the way with the most options, including APAS, which is the Advanced Pilot Assistance uh, System, I think. Uh, it's got, they've both got active track, quick shots and waypoints. The Pro Platinum doesn't have APAS and doesn't have as many quick shot options. And sadly, last of all, the Mini comes in again with just four simple quick shots and nothing else. No active track, no waypoints for pre-programming a flight path in advance. Look, how useful these things to you are pretty much depends on your intended use. Uh, and to be honest, the better you, come, you become at uh, controlling the drone, then the more you're gonna be able to do without these features. I have certainly never used APAS, but I have used waypoints and I have used the quick shots a fair bit. So look, I said earlier that the Mavic Zoom has got a near identical set of specs to the 2 Pro. Keep in mind it's the camera that is actually the main difference here. It's got a smaller half inch 12 megapixel sensor, more akin to the Pro Platinum. The camera does have an impressive optical zoom. Other than that though, it's pretty much the same as the 2 Pro. So, fair bit to take in there. I have to say, where does that leave us, or you, more importantly, in choosing which model is for you? Well, I did say that uh, not all functions and specs uh, carry the same weight, to be honest. Uh, fundamentally, people buy drones to take pictures and videos from the air. All four of these drones will do that with absolutely incredible results. Despite the Mavic Mini coming bottom in the camera contest, it still takes incredible pictures and videos that 99% of users are gonna be absolutely over the moon with. So given that, you then have to say, what's the next main consideration? And that is usually going to be price. Two Pro is four times the price of the Mini. Is it four times as good? Well, I could get a thousand comments written below and each one of those comments would be right to the person that wrote it. The point I'm trying to make is what is a red line for someone is gonna be dismissed by somebody else. So if pushed into a corner and forced to make a decision, what would that be? Well, look, if price is your main consideration, then the Mavic Mini is actually the clear winner all round here. It's got all the functionality and the ability you need to take amazing photos and videos that will impress anyone. If price is a consideration, but you're normally hiking in windy places and the like, then the Mavic Air is the clear winner. Sure, you're gonna need an a spare battery, but again, it's got all the technical ability to produce absolutely stunning results and will slice through wind without any issues at all. But if you want absolute top build, top video, top picture quality and top range, then the 2 Pro is the clear winner here. Its signal is absolutely rock solid. The picture and video quality is superb. You've got great flight time, tremendous range, and it will slice through the strongest of winds and barely blink. So with that, I think that is the fat lady singing. I would love to hear what you guys think about all four of the drones and why you chose the particular model you did, or what's more, most important to you if you're uh, in, in the market and looking to buy. Just remember, most people do love their drones that they bought, so let's keep things positive and not get into any slanging matches, please. But look, as ever, if you like this sort of stuff, then uh, help me out with a quick thumbs up. If you really like it, hit the sub, ding the dong to get notified each time I put a new video out. Either way, until next time, stay safe, stay sane, have fun, happy flying. Thank you.